everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to the channel. This video is gonna be slightly different. I'm just going to be doing kind of a vlog style Q and A. Um, I have a lot to do and it's kind of sunny outside. So I thought I would just kind of try to do this outside. It might end up being a disaster because I've never done this before, but we'll, we'll just see how it goes. So somebody emailed me with like a whole bunch of questions. Um, they wanted them answered for an assignment. So I'm just kind of uh, gonna go down this list and answer them. I'll kind of put the questions on the on the screen. So if you wanna skip around with the bookmarks, you can totally do that. But um, I just left my apartment in Juso, like Osaka, Japan. So you're looking at uh, kind of a interesting Japanese-ish neighborhood area around here. So I'm just gonna walk to this place where I always study. It's like by Osaka Umeda Station. Um, it's really nice place with a nice view and I can tend to maintain my energy really well there. So anyway, getting on to the questions. Um, the first one is what is your current role or position title? My official title where I work, um, I'm a contractor at Microsoft and my official title, like if I log into the HR portal, is principal security analyst, which is a little bit misleading. Um, I don't think I'm like principal of anything and I don't do a whole lot of security things. Um, I work on a team that manages Azure Security Benchmark which is basically, um, you can kind of think about it like a checklist uh, of what people can do to secure different services in their Azure environment. So I do a lot of automation for there. I have to know different security concepts for my job to make sense and to be able to do well at it. But I'm not doing, I'm not like sitting around doing security things all day, if that makes sense. It's mostly like software engineering and automation type things with some kind of security stuff built in. The next question is, what motivated you to learn and pursue a career in cybersecurity? So, um, probably like most people, I have to be careful I'm crossing the street here. Um, I just thought cybersecurity sounded cool, to be honest. I was already in IT operations for like several years at that point, and I just thought cybersecurity sounded cool and like something new to do. And it was kind of sensationalized by the media. Um, so I just kind of started studying it on my own. I also wanted to get more pay. I, I wanted to like, I was having a hard time breaking into that 100K range in my salary. So I was like, yeah, uh, let's just do something, right? So I was like, why not cybersecurity? Sounds cool, looks interesting enough. So that's kind of how I started getting into it. The next question is, what is your daily work routine as a cybersecurity professional? So my current daily routine is a cyber, is a principal security analyst is essentially like, um, we ma I manage this platform that's used to automate the collection of a lot of data, which is then used to kind of help secure different services in Azure. So right now, it kind of depends on what I'm doing, like during different sprints, I guess. It kind of, it kind of depends. So right now I'm fixing a whole bunch of bugs on the front end of this ap application that we use to collect kind of security related information for services in Azure. So usually I'll like log in and see what bugs I have next. I'll kind of set up my environment. Um, I'll kind of set up my test environment to kind of replicate the prod one. And then I'll just fix kind of security related bugs all day uh, involving that platform. Sometimes I'll help with some kind of automation if somebody needs some data moved around or something like this, or something's like really broken, I'll try to fix it. But a lot of my activity, it's not super security related. Like my team is building a security product currently, and I'm just kind of facilitating that, if that makes sense. So the next question is, what are the pros and cons, the best and worst parts of cybersecurity professionals in general? So it, re it really, really depends on where you work. I feel like a lot of my complaints are going to be kind of unique to me because of the places where I've worked. Um, I've worked in a lot of like local government and that tends to be really frustrating. So uh, I guess to answer generally, the, the best parts is when you can work in security operations and you can do kind of cool things, like cool technical things. If that makes sense. Uh, working with technology is really cool. It's really fun. Um, but the worst part is honestly like dealing with people because a lot of cybersecurity kind of revolves around behavior modification of other employees. And then also a lot of your job really depends on how well other people do their job around you. Like if you're in governance risk and compliance, if they don't modify their behavior or they don't work, um, it tends to make your job like really suck with a whole lot. So the best part is probably the technology. That's kind of fun. It's kind of 
cool to see attacks and deal with them. Uh, the worst part is doing all the paperwork and dealing with the, the humans who don't want to do their job. That sucks. Next question, what do you wish you had done differently when starting your career? So for me, um, I just wanted to get into cybersecurity as fast as possible. So I, I tend to take jobs that were probably not that good and I'd stayed at them for too long. So if I could go back, I'll put more emphasis on doing things that I actually wanted to do versus just trying to get jobs. And I would highly recommend you do that too. Like maybe your first job, you know, just do whatever you can do to get into the field. But after that, I would recommend like being picky and just only doing the things that you like to do. So yeah, to answer the question, I would have just been more picky with my job, so that makes sense. Next question is, what advice do you have for someone like me starting a new career in cybersecurity? So again, um, I would, if you're talking about trying to break in the field, I would think about yourself in relation to these 12 pillars of employment that I always talk about. Recognize that it's not only like your certificates or not only your degree or like not only your haircut or whatever, you know, that gets you a job. It's like a combination of all of these things. And it's good to be like really cognizant of that early on and try to kind of quote unquote, raise your stats gradually as you, as you study, I guess, or whatever you're doing. Um, and if you're not talking about getting into the field, like just general advice, I would re highly recommend figuring out what you really like to do and pushing for that. So if you want to be a pen tester, maybe it's cool that your first job is like a sock analyst or something, but don't just give up because it's easy and just stay in that tree. Like being a sock analyst, two, three, sock manager, that's going to suck if that's not what you want to do. So be flexible with your first job and then really hone your skills and your stats to kind of get the job that you want to get. Right? That's what I would recommend. Next question, what's the best way to get into cybersecurity for those with no computer science or IT experience? So again, um, think about yourself in relation to these 12 stats and think about what you want to do and just do what you can kind of do to raise these stats, right? So um, there's also like Google IT support professional certification, which is really, really good. It'll give you a nice primer for IT and tech in general. So you can do that. And I would recommend instead of trying to go straight into cybersecurity, I'd recommend like maybe working help desk or some like junior admin job or something first for a while. It just tends to be way easier to get your foot in the door if you're kind of already working in tech a little bit. Next question is what certifications are most in demand? So this is like really tricky. Again, I'm gonna talk about the stats in this one because there's like one stat that talks about certification. So in my head, uh, certifications kind of do one of two things for you. They they can either actually help you, or they can do you know, two of two things, I guess. They can actually help you get some skills, or they can help you get past HR, or they can help you do both of those things. So when you're thinking about doing a cert, you need to think about like which one of these areas it's helping you in, I guess. Um, if you feel like if you feel like you have like really strong technical aptitude and you're just like really confident in interviews, but you just can't get any interviews, I would recommend getting a CISSP, right? Or Associate of ISC score, like whatever um, you can get with your experience. But if you feel like, you know, you feel like you're getting interviews for some reason, but you just cannot do well in the interview for whatever reason, um, you just feel like you can't do really well in the interview, maybe your technical skill is lacking for that area that you're in, I would just get a certification that teaches you those skills. So if you want to be like a, if you want to be like a pen tester or something, you know, the obvious answer would maybe get like a PMPT or OSCP. Like if you're getting interviews, you don't need to care about getting eight certifications that cater to HR. You want to like hone your skills, right? So it just really depends. So in demand, when you say in demand, I kind of imagine you're talking about, I don't know, what HR wants to see. So the obvious answer would be CISSP and Security Plus, probably. Just look at yourself. Um, if you're having problems like getting interviews, you know, CISSP, Security Plus. The last question, what are the resources you recommend to someone starting a career in cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is kind of difficult to get into because it's a subset of IT. So 
if I were to just throw out a bunch of stuff, I'd kind of recommend it getting like that CompTIA trifecta, or at least that level of knowledge that is like CompTIA A plus network plus security plus. Um, you don't have to get the search, but you need to have that probably that level of knowledge, I guess. So, you know, A plus could be like Professor Messer, Network Plus, and Security Plus, and maybe Jason Dion. And I do recommend doing some kind of like offsec uh, practice, maybe either hack the box or OSCP or doing I don't know if Golden Hub exists still, because um, when you learn how to attack things, it makes it really obvious in your head why you need to defend and what you can do to defend things because when you're trying to exploit some computer that has a vulnerability you tend to grasp at any possible straw that you can to get into that computer so it really ingrains in your mind why it's important to you know patch windows and make sure your software is updated and not have insecure configurations that kind of thing will really like solidify itself in your head so um i try i you know, recommend, you know, A, A plus network plus security plus trifecta, do some kind of offsec training. Um, it, it won't hurt to get a cert as well. But yeah, that's pretty much all. That's what I did when I was trying to get into cybersecurity. I was already, I was already working in IT, so I, I started listening to all these podcasts I recommend in this video. And then I didn't like think about the 12 pillars at that time, but I had like A plus network plus security plus. And then I started studying for OSCP like really, really hard. And that, that helped me a lot. And it gave me a lot to talk about in interviews. Um, so definitely recommend doing that. And I would also study interviewing, not just like a bunch of practice questions. I do have a list. Um, I do have a playlist of videos where I, I do a bunch of interview practice questions and answers for cyber. Cybersecurity is somewhat an advanced-ish uh, career. So you might want to think about, you might want to practice articulating answers to questions and answering questions that you don't actually know the answer to. Like, how would you answer something that you didn't know the answer to? Think about answering any of your questions in the star format. Just be like as thorough as you can. Yeah, that's all. If anyone else has any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments of this video. I'll kind of collect them up or something and I'll do another Q&A like this. It might not be like a crap vlog. I have to see like how good this one turns out. Um, I didn't expect the road to be as noisy as it probably is. Obviously, it's going to be noisy, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions and we will see you in the next video.